Welcome back to Gaming Like It's 1979. Today, we're at an important milestone in our Let's Play of Touring Complete. We're going to build a working computer with all of the components we've built so far. Let's get right to it. All programs have been confined to running in order, byte by byte, but now we've added conditional logic so we can calculate anything calculable. So we need to add a mechanism for changing the program counter through instructions when certain conditions are met. When the two largest bits are both on, we're in condition mode. The value in register three is compared against the conditions Defined by the lowest three bits, if the condition is true, we overwrite the counter to the value in register zero. I see, we're comparing the value in register three, and we're using register zero as the source of truth for where we're going to next. And that'll enable loops, so that's pretty interesting. All right, so let's zoom out and look at our CPU here. What have we got? We have our registers here, we have our inputs and outputs, and we have our instruction bit up here. So let's, do I have any colors I haven't used yet? Yeah, I've used cyan. You know, I don't think we've used green much at all. So let's use green uh, to help us keep track of this. We're gonna use that to indicate everything we're doing with that's related to jumps. We have the two highest bits, right? And, oh wait, wait, wait we don't need these at all because it's going to be uh, because the initial value is going to the decoder. And so it's going to be if this bit here is on, if, because we're coming out of the, the instruction decoder, um, that means we're in condition mode. Great. We know we're going to need some logic. So where is our, there we go. That's our conditional unit. And this is the thing that's actually going to evaluate the conditions. So the condition is specified by the three lowest bits of our instruction. So now we can peel off our program input and we will feed it into the condition field field the condition input of our uh, condition unit, we have the result. So the result is going to be true or false. And therefore, it's going to go here to our increment, to our 8-bit counter. And that result is going to indicate whether or not we actually use the input to the program counter. So it's going to the overwrite bit right there. A little bit of a run there. I don't know, I don't love that, but that's okay. And that leaves, oh, no, I put it in the wrong place. It's actually going right here. Let me zoom in, it's gotta be hard to see on YouTube. There we go, right. So that's a, a control bit, basically. And the value it's going to jump to, if I recall correctly, is the value all the way over here in register zero. So let's go ahead and pull this this way. Hmm. One more. Sorry, I like straight lines. What can I tell you? Right there. Get rid of that node. All right, this is fully half of what we need to do. And the, it's more than half. The other half is we need to get the input into our condition unit. And if I recall correctly, that's coming from register three, zero, one, two, three. What's the best way to route it there? Uh, probably up top. So let's, we're gonna use this output on the register that always gives the value, gives it regardless of whether or not we, um, regardless of whether or not we're in load or save mode. All right, so now this is not quite right still. And the reason it's not quite right 
is that we only want this conditional unit to be doing work when we're in condition mode. So I think the easiest way to do this is to always, under all conditions, have the conditional unit emit an answer as if it's being used, but only use that answer, which is this input output line here. Only use that if we are in fact in condition mode. Uh, in fact, that's such a special thing. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a slightly different color, right? We'll give it that color. So that's wrong. Okay, and we're going to get an end. We're just going to end this. And can I flip it upside down? I sure can. Look at that. And the thing we want to end it with is this line coming off the decoder, instruction decoder. Ugh. The adventures of watching me click through a game. All right, there we go. Let's pull this one down again. You know what? I guess we can, in fact, do this. Let's see, I, I don't use rotation very much. I probably underuse it, but this feels like a great time to rotate. No, I made it go away. All right, let's try it again. Rotate, rotate. There we go. Oh, that's going to be much neater, isn't it? Okay, so this is the condition, which is this one here. And this is the input, which is all the way over here. Great. Okay, and then our result here, we can actually move this end right over here. So it goes here, that goes there, and then we can, all right, that, I could be wrong, I'm gonna hit run, maybe this will all end in tears, but I think this is what we were asked to do. So let's give it a go. Fingers crossed. Very first, uh, the very first uh, answer dies. So what did we do wrong? Let's take a look. Copy input one to register one. And right away we see that one is in our um, program counter. So, so I think I must have done something wrong with that program counter. Let's try that again. In fact, we look at that. You can see the entire, it looks like the program counter was overwritten. Okay, now it's working. Wait, that can't be right. Okay, that was very strange. I think there was a, uh, that looked like some sort of glitch. I, I'm, I'm sure it's wrong, but it looks like it wasn't displaying the right thing. So let's reset it and let's try it again. Just hit run. Okay, it was not the first thing done. It was, uh, looks like the fourth instruction, 193, and it is a counter instruction. So that's good. That implies that it's the counter going wrong, and hopefully I didn't break anything when I was resizing and moving things around. If register three equals zero, counter equals zero. Okay, and register three is not zero. Therefore, counter is not zero. Oh. Furthermore, it's saying register one should be one. Oh. 
Maybe I did break something. Let's reset it. Let's look at the instruction before 193. Copy input 1 to register 1. That happened. Copy input 2 to register 2. That happened. Subtract. Okay, so something about this counter instruction actually broke register 1. We saw that it became 0. How did that happen? Well, that happened. Oh, I bet I know what happened. Okay, so if we look at register 1, we can see that its enable bit, its save bit rather, is on. So it's doing what we told it to. The value zero is coming in, the save bit is on, therefore it's saving. So if we trace that save bit back, just to make sure we didn't break anything, we can see that the, in, the decoder here or is in fact decoding this value and saying that uh, the first input, which is the one that goes to register one, is high. So I think what's going on here is that all of our bits coming out of this decoder are activating the save flags on the... In other words, this happened to be register one this time, but I think this could be any of them, right? So in the case when, certainly in the case when we are in comparison mode, we never want the, any of these lines to be high. And that's going to be a challenge, right? Because the way we've built this, this decoder is just providing an address. So even if we turned all those bits off, it wouldn't matter. It would just be register zero that would, uh, well, but register zero might be special because register zero is going to this OR gate. Yeah, because that would be high and then that would turn that on. Yeah, this might be, uh, I might need another conditional here probably right here kind of an and not no it can't be because it would have to be for all of them Ooh, this is a conundrum this is tricky and i think this has to do with the piecewise way i dealt with these four states they're not really related I think in order to do this, the, the only, so what are our three states here of the decoder? Immediate writes a value to a register. Calculation stores some value in certain registers. And, and in fact, why, why doesn't this error happen with the calculation case? That's the interesting thing. Um, oh, because these opcodes, this is why, ooh, in both calculate and copy cases, the low three bits of this happen to be what you want them to be by pure coincidence. So I can think of two ways to slice this. One is to recognize that we're in condition case and add essentially and nots to all of these to make sure that we don't accidentally save to a register. The hacky way to do it. Oh, we can disable. I'm spending all this time thinking about how to do this, but we actually can completely disable this, uh, dec this decoder, which is, that's what we want to do. And in fact, we're already doing that in a certain case, looks like, looks like we're disabling in every case except copy. So actually we can solve this level, I think, famous last words, with literally just that, right? Well, let's try it, reset it. Short circuit, okay. 
Why does that short circuit? I think I just need a three. I mean, what I did here was too cheesy. If I get rid of this OR gate and put in a three gate OR. In that case, that one goes there. Ooh, this is awfully tight, huh? Route that down this way. Sure, I'm glad wires can cross. That goes here. And that goes here. So now any of these three, I guess we could do and not would be, uh, or just a not gate from that would be even, I looks like I picked the wrong one here. In fact, that is faster, isn't it? Ah, but we're already pulling those wires. So it's not the end of the world. That goes here. All right, I think that's correct. Let's give it a go. That looks beautiful. We get a small insult from our alien captor and our level is complete. So at that point, we've built a working computer. Now, I don't want to spoil the surprise because we are going to continue on with Turing Complete. In many of the NAND Tetris games out there, this is where it would end um, because the circuitry is kind of a natural stopping place. Turing Complete goes a lot farther and we're actually going to start getting into what assembly language means i think a lot of people think that assembly language is like any other programming language and to some extent kind of mathematically it is but the one of the key differences between assembly language and higher level languages is that assembly languages mirror the architecture of the machine they're on in a very fundamental way. And one of the beautiful things about the NAND to Tetris course is that since you have created that architecture yourself, you understand at a very kind of intuitive level, this bit causes these mechanical changes, which causes this behavior in this level. For example, if the two highest bits of the instruction are on, that's going to cause some sort of comparison and possibly side effect the program counter like we did here. So that understanding really makes programming assembly language a very different experience. And that's what the next few levels of Turing Complete are about. And we're going to talk about those next time. Thank you for joining me on this journey. This has been Gaming Like It's 1979. Thanks for watching.